Are you getting a bull terrier puppy, but you're not actually sure what to do on the day you get them home? Well, this is the perfect video for you. Welcome back to the Fenrir Bull Terrier Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Bull Terrier and then how to become a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. Getting a brand new Bull Terrier puppy is very, very exciting. However, what do you actually do on the day you get them home? Well, today we're going to be tuning into a webinar that canine behaviorist and founder of FenrirCanineLeaders.com, Will, has recorded all about what to do when you get your puppy home. So over to you, Will. So here we are, guys, back with another quick fire webinar. And today we're going to be talking about the things that you absolutely need to do as soon as you bring your new puppy home. Now, what I've done is I've broken it down into my top five tips, and these are applicable whether you've just got a new puppy and you're or taking your new puppy home or maybe you're starting to be interested in getting into a career of working with dogs and these are the kind of things that you want to be encouraging your clients to be thinking about and starting the second they bring their puppy home. So my first point in the number five spot is to get a plan and get a routine. I can't stress that enough. The people that have the most amount of success as quickly as possible are the people that have done the research up front. They put that hard work up front and then they're ready. They know exactly what they're going to do. They've got a routine in place. They've got a time management grid in place. They know what they're going to be working on, when they're going to be working on it, and more importantly, why they're going to be working on those things with the new puppy. If you've done that work up front, the stress levels come down drastically it allows you to be a more calm consistent leader and it allows you to know this is what I'm going to be doing this is when I'm going to be doing it and this is why I'm doing that thing and I've got a trust in the process and the plan that I'm moving forward now there is lots of different plans out there of course I'm going to be very biased to my own perfect puppy course that's the plan that I've created and the one that thousands of my clients have found useful but you don't have to follow that if you want to follow another plan that you find um, more applicable to your style that's completely okay Okay as well I just want to recommend get a plan now if you're sat at home and you just picked up your puppy today it's not ideal but it's definitely not too late so right now use this as motivation if it wants to be our perfect puppy course there'll be a link down below if you want to go over different trainers course or philosophy again just choose a plan that resonates with you research it and get ready to put it into place straight away catch up on those few hours maybe those couple of days that you're behind but get that plan in place get that routine in place and you'll be able to get off to an amazing start which ties in with my next point and that is to start from the very first second you meet your new puppy now again if you're watching this video preemptively and proactively fantastic because now you're going to be able to ready to know right here we go i'm ready to start i've not even met my puppy yet and i'm ready to get going if you're watching this again because you've just got your new puppy maybe you've had your puppy for a couple of days the second you finish watching this video get after it find a plan and put it in place do not wait until your puppy is three months six months 12 months old before you start really trying to put these things into practice you you have to start from the second you get your new dog. That doesn't just mean doing five minutes of training uh, once every other day or going to one training session at a weekend for one hour a week. I mean from now displaying calm, consistent leadership every second of every day and every interaction you have with your new dog. It's how you live with your dog is far more important than the fraction of the time you spend training your dog. Now training your dog is important but manners and socialization and leadership and relationship are equally if not more important so start the second you meet your dog build that trust let that dog see you as its calm consistent leader that it can look to for guidance and direction no matter what circumstance or situation it finds itself in and you will be a fantastic dog owner that has a dog that is just a pleasure to be around get after it straight away now, if you're looking for something to get started with on day one, toilet training. Again, do not wait, do not be lazy, be disciplined and routined. Again, we cover toilet training at length in my Perfect Puppy course, and we've got loads of videos here on YouTube talking about potty training or toilet training, whatever you call it, from wherever you are in the world. But again, from the second you bring your dog home, get started on toilet training. To give a very quick summary of how we go about toilet training puppies and how we teach our clients to toilet train their puppies, is set an, an alarm on your phone every hour on the hour 
take your dog out and give them the opportunity to go to the toilet. If they do a number one or number two when they're outside in the designated spot that you've chosen, lavishly praise and reward them and let them know, excellent job, I really enjoy that. On top of on the hour, every hour, when they've had something to eat, when they've had a drink, or when they've just woke up from a nap, take them outside and give them the opportunity to go for a number one or number two. If you are routine, militant, and disciplined, it is very common for people that are willing to put in that level of effort to never have a toilet accident ever with their puppy from the second they bring it home. Set your puppy up for success, be a calm, consistent leader, and do, don't set them up to fail. If you get ahead of the game, set them up and give them plenty of opportunities to go and do the right thing in the right place, lavishly reward and praise that, toilet training is a breeze. If you wait for those bad habits to settle in, the dog starts to have accidents in the house, no matter how thoroughly you clean it, they can probably smell it, it starts to become a learnt behaviour. Many owners react in the wrong way by using the wrong kinds of punishment at the wrong time, causing more confusion, breaking down your relationship, breaking down trust, and it's the start of a vicious cycle to a poorly behaved dog. Routine, discipline, structure, get after it, hard work, effort. I can't stress those things enough, but if you do that from the day you bring your puppy home, you'll have no problems whatsoever. Hey guys, if you're not already, you should be following our Fenrir Rescue Diaries over on Fenrir Canine Training Channel. That is following my journey of working at a rescue centre, helping dogs that have been abandoned, abused, given up or found as strays and helping implement behaviour modification programmes to allow them to become perfect canine companions that can be rehomed to their forever homes. So if you're interested in following my journey of how I do that, there'll be a link to that channel down in the description box below. I think you'll really enjoy Enjoy the journey but I'll let you get back to the video you were just watching. Next let's talk about boundaries. Again this is something that you should be talking about with your family before you bring your new puppy home, long before you bring your new puppy home. If you haven't and you found yourself with a new puppy it's not too late. Start putting boundaries in place now. Now the thing with boundaries is that they are very subjective and it's not something that I like to give black and white definitive answers on because different people want dogs for different reasons. Therefore they'll have different rules, boundaries and expectations. Now for me there is some mandatory things in terms of uh, say a obedience we want to sit stay heel down recall and we want to be able to get a dog to sit stay and break around meal times for me that's mandatory I think all dog owners should do that with their dogs but if you want to have your dog come up on the sofa no problem whatsoever if you want your dog to sleep with you on the bed I don't overly recommend it especially when they're young but again that's subjective what I think you should do is put boundaries in place for absolutely everything that's good in that dog's life including thresholds things that you might not deem to be highly rewarding for a dog, put a boundary in place to be able to stop them gaining free access to those things. What that looks like is if your dog wants its toys, brilliant, don't give him free access to those toys. Remove the toys, put them in a basket and put them up out of the way. Now, when he gets access to those toys is when you decide, and ideally, as soon as they've got a sit, stay and break command, you can put them into a sit, stay, put the toy down and then break them and allow them to have it. If you want them to come up on the sofa, they have to sit, stay, and then welcome them up onto the sofa. Before you go out of a doorway to the great outdoors, sit, stay, calmly, patiently. Now I'm gonna move through the threshold and welcome you through it as well. Put boundaries in place. Have your dog look up to you for guidance and direction the second you bring it home, and you'll very quickly start to build that relationship. If you can make that habit, that is the key to being a high-level canine leader, that you do these things without even thinking, you ask your dog to look up to you for guidance and direction without even thinking, that will build that relationship, that will build that leadership, and that's how you have a perfect canine companion. Which takes us on to my last point, which we've kind of touched on a little bit when I've been waffling in this little webinar, but that is about the importance of a sit-stay break. I think that that is something that you can start working on from the second you bring your dog home. Now, don't get me wrong, it's quite a complicated routine to have nailed, but it's definitely something that you can start working on. Talking about boundaries and the importance of manners, the importance of having a calm, relaxed dog that's a pleasure to be around, in my opinion, nothing is better for that uh, um, 
that goal of having that perfect canine companion and a rock solid sit, stay and break. Now a puppy, the day you bring it home, is capable of learning how to sit down. We have a basic law, mark, reinforce based methodology, very fun, very positive, you can get them to sit. Once you can get a dog to sit, you can then layer up stay really nicely, then you can start to layer up break. Teaching a dog to break can be quite complicated, but if you're starting that from day one, the quicker you can get it done, the quicker you can start putting that, sit, that sit, stay, break routine before food, before water, before toys, before access to furniture, before access to going outside, before access to play, before access to cuddles, before access to anything that it finds valuable in its life. If the dog knows that all it has to do is sit down calmly with good manners and wait patiently while you ask it to, looking up to you for guidance and direction and waiting until you give it permission, there is nothing better that you can do for your dog and you can start that from day one. Like I say, you might not get there in day one you won't get there in day one but start from day one start as you mean to go on implement these things get your clients to start implementing this way of thinking because it's all mindset that what we do is the easy bit why we do it is what separates an okay dog owner from a world-class dog owner understand the mindset and you'll be a world-class, high-level canine leader with a perfect canine companion. So I hope you enjoyed that quick fire breakdown. I really enjoy helping you guys get out there, work with your dogs, help your clients work with their dogs, have some fun in the process, and let's help everybody in the world try and enjoy perfect canine companions the way that they're meant to be enjoyed. There you have it guys, some really useful tips and tricks that you can put into practice straight away with your Bull Terrier when you get them home. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, get involved in the comments down below as we would love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we have two dedicated videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Fenrir Bull Terrier Show.